Tal Kadosh, Boker Or, Bekim Balacha, Guru Bekim Balacha 2, Day 47, Siman 4, page 156, yeah, and it says over here like this, yeah, if someone remained awake all night long, we're talking about Hilchot Nitzilat in the morning, but this person came and he's awake all night, yeah, this was your question, yeah, so Maran explained in the Bet Yosef, that this person will not have to perform the tilat adam according to the Rosh since he was in control of his hands throughout the entire night. Since he remained awake, there's no difference between the day and the night. Likewise, the Zohar's reason would not apply as well. What was the Zohar? That since he went to sleep, so sleep is a taste of death. No, Nagaze is a Rosh, right? A taste of death. And therefore, if someone did not sleep at all, there's no there's no contamination for the reason of tilat adam. So one would assume that according to the Rashba would agree in this case that tilat adam is unnecessary since the person is not renewed. <laughs> the guy is half, uh, I don't know what, you know, say he didn't, uh, he didn't sleep at all. He's zombie. So, you know, we have a lot of those. Yeah, so he says, he's not deposited his soul with Hashem, nor has Hashem refreshed it for him. Nevertheless, he says, Maran countered that one might still be obligated to perform the Tilat Adayim, although one did not sleep. It could be, though, he explained that once our sages instituted the Mitzvah, the Tilat Adayim in the morning, the Mitzvah is coming upon all people, whether or not they slept or not during the night. This is a Tamuri concept of law, Pelug, la plug, meaning that once the sages instituted halacha, it's universal, and therefore whether or not it's actually it's it's practical or a particular situation, right? Yeah. So according to the Rosh's reasoning, however, the principle of lo plug does not apply. He taught that etilat edaim was instituted for a very practical reason. One's hands are dirty when one wakes up in the morning when he was slept. When a person knows that his hands are clean. There's no basis for washing them. According to the Orchot Chaim, however, the night causes the person then to become contaminated whether he slept or not. Meaning it's just the night. It's a din in the night. The mitzvah and the tilat will be necessary in any case. So fine. So basically you have different opinions. Basically, what do you, are you, you need? You don't need. So therefore, we're going to see. If someone napped only for a short time at the night, Maran is that according to the Rosh, it would, it would not be necessary to do the tilat in this case. In fact, the Rosh issued the ruling in a response we do not suspect anyone touches an unclean part of his body during a short nap. According to the Rashba, however, you would definitely need the Tilat Adayim because even a short nap is enough to rejuvenate yourself, right? It's like, you know, you plunge yourself in. So now you have to do the Tilat with the Bracha. The Zohar's reason, that the harm, right, might apply also in this case. It depends if the person slept long enough for his hands to become spiritually contaminated. It appears from the Zohar that if, if it was going to be the 59 breaths or less, which is less than a half an hour, the harmful forces do not contaminate the person who slept. The flavor of death is experienced only if the nap is at least 60 breaths long. According to the Ruch it makes no difference. Huh? No, no, no. Half an hour. Half an hour. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah, according to the Ruch it makes no difference how long a person sleeps or if he slept at all. Every morning it's necessary to do the Tilat Adayim. What is Allah if someone woke up before dawn and performed the Tilat Adayim? Must he repeat it? See below Allah 64. If someone went to bed after midnight, it is, is it necessary to perform the Tilat Adayim in the morning? See below Allah 60. What is Allah if someone slept while wearing gloves? So now you already know that's what I told you yesterday. You already know that according to the Rosh, you didn't touch a body part. But even if you did, your hands are still clean. So, see you, Allah 49. Yeah? Fine. Going to sleep after midnight. Okay? The Allah is more lenient in several aspects for someone who goes to sleep after halachic midnight. This is because of Shlomo Mizrahi Sharabi taught. And when someone remains awake until after midnight, his body and hands are not condemned by harmful forces. Nevertheless, it's still necessary to form Nitilat Adam upon waking up in the morning. And to say the Barachav Nitilat Adam is explained in Lacha number 60, which means even though after Chatzot it's lighter, there's less Tum'ah because it's after Chatzot. That's why there's some people that they say, Are you allowed to touch your clothing before Nitilat Adam? So some people make a differentiation between if it was after Chatzot or not. Because if, it, if you went to sleep after Chatzot, so your hands are not that tame, and therefore you'll be able to touch your clothing before Netilat Adayim. Other people say, no, 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 you shouldn't. What? Because after Chatzot, after Chatzot is already, it's more of a, of a, of a lighter period of Tumah, because it's already after Chatzot Laina. So after Chatzot, it's a different Talakha. Okay, one second, one second, one second. Let me, yeah? One second. If the person recited all the morning blessings and continued to study Torah for some time after midnight before going to sleep, the Poskim debated whether or not he must say the Berachah in the morning. See below in Alachot 39 to 43, 44, and 40. Why only the hands? No, you ever thought of that, doctor? Why only the hands? Why not the feet? Wash your feet. 
Ah, it is self-evident that according to the Rosh, the mitzvah is to wash the hands and not any more of anybody's body. According to the why, because it's only that your hands are touching, uh, your feet are not touching the rest of your body or the, your other body parts, right? Doesn't matter, right? He says, according to the Rashba, right, the who compared a person in the morning to a Kohen beginning his service in the Bet Dash, one may ask, why does it only apply to the hands? It should be also the feet. So some explanation, right, is needed regarding the reasons given by the Zohar or the Chaim. Why are the hands contaminated by harmful forces and not the rest of the body? The Benish Hai comes and he explains that one's hands and feet are the extremites of one's body, the, the extremes. And therefore, the fingers and toes of the, are the tips of the extremes. The fingers correspond to the letters Mem, Nun, Sadi, Pe, Kaf, Mansepach. Each of these letters has two forms. One when used in the beginning or the middle of the word, and another one used at the end of the word. These ten forms correspond to the ten fingers on one's hand and they are repeated on the ten toes. The harmful spiritual forces can cleave only to the tips of one's body, and these forces are represented, according to the Kabbalah, by these ten letter forms. Okay? So he says, while a person is awake, these harmful forces have no access to the person. His fingernails and toenails prevent them from approaching him. While he's asleep at night, however, they attach themselves to his fingers and toes, five on the right side and five on the left. In order to remove their influence, one must pour water, which is chesed, Right over the fingers. In this way, the five forces of kindness overcome the five harmful forces on each hand. Okay, so that's your Kabbalistic explanation. Why Dafka on the hands? No. No. Ma? So, according to them, the Rashba, so why don't we do it on the feet then? Even according to this Shita, why don't you do it on the feet? So he says, the reason for Netzilat Adayin given by the Rosh is applies to the hands only. There's no basis for it to be necessary to wash one's feet. According to all the other reasons, however, it would seem that it's necessary to do one's feet as well. The Ben Yishchai said an explanation from the Yafesha. He taught that the harmful spiritual are firmly attached to one's toes. Rinsing them with water is insufficient. Right? The harmful forces remain attached regardless. Only the Kuanim and the Bet Dash were able to dispel the contamination through the sacred water of the Kiyor when they stood in Sanctuary Bet Dash compound. Nevertheless, he added that we can weaken these forces when we bathe our feet in preparation for Shabbat. The sanctity of the Shabbat gives us that power. So when we come and we're going to wash our feet, that is going to help us take away from the from the from the tumah. But regular a regular day, you're just going to wash your feet. It doesn't help. It doesn't take it in any way. What about nowadays? The status of harmful spiritual forces in the modern times. That he shouldn't see on sighted. Right, the opinion of many people scheme that there no longer exists any harmful spiritual forces that condemn one's hands overnight. Most prominent is that of Shlomo Luria, the Marshal, who ruled that the harmful forces no longer exist, and therefore it's sufficient to watch each hand twice instead of three times. Concurring this with this, you have Rabbi Moshe ben Habib, the Lechem Mishneh, and the Domestic Eliezer. The response of Yitzchak Yeranen took issue with this, arguing that the Maran Yishon misunderstood his poskim, but in the response of Yibiyah Omer, Maran defended his position. He explained that we can rely upon these poskim only if we have additional basis for leniency. But we may not rely on their opinion alone. This argument and its practical application can be found below in Alachot 39 and 41. That means there are going to be some times that we're going to use this as a sniff to be Mikel, but nowadays there's no Tumah. There's no Tumah that's going to come and it's going to grab on the on the hand. So, again, okay, but we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. Well, we're going to see one minute. It's not that, that's not that simple. Fine. Next. Importance of the morning Nitilat English edition. In the preface to Siman 158, there's a presentation of the importance of stages placed on the mitzvah of Nitilat in preparation for a meal. Regarding the mitzvah of morning Nitilat the Kavarim Falache states that anyone who disregards this mitzvah is liable to be excommunicated. A person that does not do Nitilat Adam Shachrit, Nidui, Harem. Yeah? His sin is considered equal to that committing of adultery. Who? And he will be uprooted from the world. Huh? Yeah, Mamash, uprooted from the world. The Rizal's disciples taught that such a person will be reincarnated into water, running downhill in a stream. So much, he comes back as a Gilgul of water coming down in a stream. So he says something that never has a moment's rest. I mean, he's always just uh, rushing. Yeah? This is the identical punishment that is slated for a murder based upon the Pasuk. Right? You should spill it onto the ground like water. So if he's a murderer, will also come back like a mamash, uh, like a stream of water. 
According to popular legend, Harav Yisrael Bal Shem Tov once wandered deep into a forest when he discovered an enormous toad. He realized that the toad possessed the reincarnated soul of a person and he began a conversation with it. The tortured soul related to him that he had been imprisoned inside a slowly creature for 500 years because he once disparaged the importance of Netilat Tadayim and he failed to perform the mitzvah properly. Rav Chaim Falache mentioned this story in his Torah, the Torah of Chaim, and concluded that anyone who hears or reads this story should, should become filled with dread. Maran commented in the Shulchan Aruch, like, very fearful, that if a Torah scholar feels to wash his hands when the halacha demands it, he will forget his Torah knowledge. And if he's not learned a man, he will lose his sanity. So at least if a person is a Tamil Chacham, fine, he'll lose his Chochmah, but he'll still stay, uh, you know, the other one, he'll become crazy. Fine. Halacha number one, and this is where we finish. Right? The mitzvah. The halacha demands that each person, right, wash his hands in the morning upon waking up. He must pour water on his hands from a container. And before drying them, he says, Right? He says, May you bless God of our master, God our master, King of the universe, sanctified us with the mitzvot, and commanded us regarding Netilat Yadayim. Okay.